class. So today we're going to start a new chapter talking about net pay. So in chapter one, we spent a couple weeks discussing how to figure out what your gross pay would be. That gross pay is the pay that you had earned, whether you got paid hourly or paid salary or some other method. The gross pay is the total income that you have earned. Now we talked a little bit last week about different types of taxes. So now we're gonna take into chapter two and figure out what your net pay is actually going to be. So the difference between these two ideas is the gross pay is all of the money that you have earned and net pay is going to be what you actually bring home. So if you look at this generic pay stub, which would accompany your paychecks when you start receiving a paycheck, you can see things on here like gross wages. So great gross wages, you can see that they worked 80 hours, so probably a two week time span at $28 an hour earned them a total income of $2,240 for that pay period. But you can see things for this current total pay period like 3248, $138.88, $360.78, $106.76, and $20.16. cents. Now what those totals are, are those are your Medicare, your Social Security taxes, your federal tax, your state taxes. Those are all the taxes that are being subtracted out of that gross pay. So when your employer actually writes your paycheck and you go to cash it, you won't receive that $2,240. You're going to actually receive $1,580.94. This is what your actual bring home pay will be, the money you will get to spend out of your paycheck. So in this lesson today, we're going to specifically talk about the federal income. And as we move through the chapter, we're going to talk about things like the Medicare tax, the Social Security tax, and the state tax, and other taxes. All right, but today we're specifically talking about federal income tax. With federal income tax, we're going to look at two different methods. We're going to look at a series of tables that will already be calculated for us, and we're gonna look at a percentage method. So what we're looking at finding today is the federal income tax. And that federal income tax is a tax paid to the federal government, and that's applied to all of your earnings. Now, whether you have just received a paycheck or whether you're receiving earnings on capital gains. That's like if you're getting interest on your savings accounts or if you have any mutual funds or stocks, you'll have to actually pay federal income tax on any of those earnings as well. All right, now you probably won't do that weekly. You'll do that towards the end of the year or you'll do that quarterly. Now, for us to understand federal income tax, the Federal government allows us to have withholding allowances. Now that's depending on how many dependents you have living with you. Do you have a husband? Do you have a wife? Do you have children? So what we'll do is we're going to calculate those withholding allowances, and that's the number of people an employee supports, whether it's just themselves. If it's just themselves, they would file single, or if they have a spouse, they would file married. And if they have children, they would file with dependents. So we're going to be needing to look up what our withholding allowances are. And we're also going to use tables A2 and A3. Or, or actually, it's A2 through A5 in the back of your book in your appendix section. So. You're going to have to flip back there with me as we do these problems. All right, so moving on here, we're going to look at our first example. And this example is going to use the tables in the back, so I already have one clipped out for us. 
It says Mitchell is a business manager. His gross pay for the week is $768.50. He is married and claims two allowances for himself and his wife. So I could see he doesn't have any children. He's just claiming two allowances. What amount will Mitchell's employer withhold from his pay for federal income tax? So the first thing you want to do when you're flipping back to those appendix pages is you want to make sure that you are looking at the married tables because there's also single tables attached to that as well. All right, now we are looking for the number that matches the $768.50 for his gross pay for the week and claiming two people, himself and his wife. So I'm going to scroll over here so I can see that I'm in this row here between $760 and $770. And I'm going to scroll over here to 2 and it's going to intersect at $57. So what this table does is this table's already calculated with all of the federal income tax formulas what should be withheld from Mitchell's paycheck. So in this instance, $57 is going to be taken out of his paycheck and sent to the federal government for his federal income taxes. All right, so I'm going to ask you to try on page 129. I want you to try concept check number one and number two. Now you're going to have to flip back to those appendix pages now as well, so you're going to need to pause this video and try those two problems. Welcome back. I hope that you were able to try those problems and that you were able to finish number one and get that the federal income tax withheld was $18 and number two with $31. If you're having a problem with that, make sure you send me an email so I can help you out a little bit. All right, we're going to move on to our second type of federal income tax withholdings. Now, it's still the same tax, but this is a different method. So this is the percentage method, and you're going to need this table to be able to do that or calculate those federal income taxes. Now, this is actually doing it by hand without having those tables do it for us. So the first thing we will have to do is we're going to have to take our number of allowances, so that's any dependents that we have, and we're going to multiply it by $63.46. Once we figure out what our allowance is, we're going to take that gross pay that we should have earned and we're going to subtract our allowance amount. That becomes our taxable wage. Those are the wages that actually get taxed. So the government gives us a little bit of leniency and not taxes your entire paycheck, but it bases it off of your spouse. And if you have children, you'll get a larger allowance amount if you have children. The amount withheld for the federal income tax then uses the series of tables. Now, this is going to de be dependent on how much money you are earning. So you can see what happens here is if you're earning only between $51 and $195, you're only paying 10% in excess of $51. But as you increase your earnings, the percentages also increase and you're added on an additional price for your federal income tax. So this is tiered for what your actual gross pay will be. The more you get paid, the higher your tax bracket becomes. All right, so we're gonna use this tax bracket in example two. So in example two, it says April's gross pay for this week is $493. She is single and claims two allowances. So she could be claiming for herself and for one child. It says use the percentage method to find her pay for federal income tax. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate what her allowance is. So since she claims two, what she's going to do is she's going to take two times $63.46, and that's going to get that her allowance is $126.92. 
Now what she gets to do with that number is she gets to take that off of her weekly earnings. So she's not going to pay tax on her entire gross pay, just the difference. So the next step I'm going to do, so step one was to find the allowance. Step two is to calculate the taxable wage. So to calculate the taxable wage, she's going to take her gross pay and she's going to subtract from it her allowances, which is $126.92. So her taxable wage ends up only being $366.08. So now from there, I'm going to go to the tax table and I'm going to decide which tier she falls into. So she makes over $195, but not over $645. So she's going to be at tier two. So now to calculate in step three, her tax that's going to be withheld from her paycheck. we're gonna to have to make this calculation. We're gonna take $14.40 and we're gonna add that to 15% of, that means to multiply, the excess of over $195. So her taxable wage was $366.08. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract from that $195 first. So we're going to find this excess. Let's calculate this amount first. So with my calculator, I'm going to take $366.08 and subtract $195 from that. So that means that our math becomes taking $14.40 plus 15% of $171.08. When I calculate that out, so I'll take my 15%, that's going to give me a taxable wage of $14.40 plus $25.60, 66 cents, excuse me, for a total tax of, let me quickly add that together, $40.06 total. So that's what is going to be withheld and sent to the federal government out of her paycheck. All right, now I'm gonna ask you to pause the video again, and I'm gonna ask you to try concept check three and four on page 130. When you're finished, you can check your work with my solutions on the next screen. So welcome back. I hope that you took the time to work through these problems on your own and that you're given an allowance for number three of $126.92. When you subtract that from your earnings, you get a taxable wage of $166.31. And when you're using that percentage method, you should have been using tier one, where you take $0 plus 10% of $166.31 minus 51. So the taxable, the tax that's withheld for federal income tax is $11.53. For concept check number four, you're going to see that the allowance, there were four allowances, which was a total of $253.84. When we subtract that from the gross earnings, that gave us $334.10 which took us to tier two, like our example two, which was a total of $14.40 plus 15% of the excess of 195, finding us a the federal income tax that's withheld of being $35.27. If you have any questions, please send me an email about this lesson. I will post your assignment to Google Classroom. I hope you all have a wonderful day.